In a spectacular show of military and tactical superiority, Governor Scarlock single-handedly captured the Central Space City for the glory of the Entity Alliance. There had only been a few brief attempts to test the Empire's Imperial Guard around the city in the past. The news of a single challenger overwhelming their defenses traveled quickly throughout the galaxy. As a new faction moved into the Central Space City, stock markets across the galaxy shifted as corporations and every type of industry waited to see how the change would affect galactic policies. Declining to comment on specifics while retaining a great deal of modesty, Governor Scarlock praised his ally Harkonnen for being ready to support his fleets during the capture process. The political and market analysts predict favorable changes with the new administration. Archon Vanguard forces reached the Galactic Core defensive line, destroying several of the new anti-Empire stellar cannons. These forces were comprised of previously unknown designs and capabilities that overwhelmed the defenders. Reports were unclear on details about the Vanguard forces, and subsequent waves no doubt poured into our galaxy. In a matter of weeks, the Archon Vanguard hit military and civilian industrial and mining infrastructures in an effort to cripple the galactic economy. As a result, new manufacturing standards were issued by all major governments to cope with the crisis. In addition to the substantial increase in costs to support military fleets and interstellar business, many governors have simply withdrawn to their home stars and fortified their positions to wait out future invasions. Those entities that can still function with the new standards have also been withdrawn and far more cautious with their endeavors. During this time, Centaurian, commander of the Animal House Alliance, took leave of his station, which was then filled by the Alliance co-founder Desmodian. Around the same time, disavowed commander and Tross relinquished his position to Tismet. Sources indicate that tensions between the two alliances have lessened considerably with the change in leadership. Military channels were flooded with reports in between most of the galaxy's alliances earlier this month when Governor Turbs of the Order of Antros proudly released an official statement confirming the first maiden voyage of the galaxy's largest flagship to date, the Titan-class Holy Avenger. I will be using it, it's not just a hood ornament. Weeks after the Arkan invasion, Animal House forces began striking order of Andros holdings. Official complaints were lodged only after two days, reportedly when Animal House forces finally found order of Andros governors who had not abandoned their worlds and remained active members of the Alliance. Governor Big Nasty of the Order of Andros was the first to attempt to reach out to the Animal House representatives and try to settle the conflict with negotiations. Animal House, however, was completely unwilling to negotiate, and so the war moved into full swing from both sides with public declarations of war. While it is apparent that the Animal House Alliance has a history with the Order of Andros, most notably the previous war that was instigated by the Order of Andros, the commander had these assurances to make to the general public. The recent changes have hurt all alliances. While we know our strength, we now question the strength and legitimacy of the Order of Andros with its claim to territory and fortresses. This is not a personal grudge match, but we invite the Order to show us its strength as it currently stands as the largest alliance in the galaxy. At the start of the war, the Order of Andros held the Valna, Lugase, and Gathan fortresses, and controlled over 185 planets. The Animal House Alliance held the Galleon and Kalon fortresses, and controlled 98 planets. Surprisingly, the Order of Andros commander, Big Bro Andros, after having allegedly issued a threat against Animal House and after less than a full day of official fighting, stepped down from his position. But Buffett took control of the Order of Andros Alliance after that. The Animal House Alliance led to fierce assault against as many Order of Andros holdings as it could get closed to. Two days into the war, the Order of Andros released control of its Valna fortress to disavowed, apparently in preparation to capture an Animal House fortress. However, due to the interstellar regulations on lawful control of a fortress at the time, they were unable to execute their plans as the Animal House Alliance had destroyed too many Order of Andros holdings. While Animal House continued to attack the Order of Andros, they reported unexpectedly low resistance and retaliation against their own forces. After about five days, the Buffett, commander of the Order of Andros, surrendered to Animal House. Dismodian, commander of Animal House, accepted the petition of surrender and called a 24-hour ceasefire in which time the Alliance would vote on a resolution to end the war or not. 
outbound fleet targets were notified of incoming assaults that could not be recalled, on both sides, and the ceasefire was maintained. One day later, the Animal House Alliance declared full acceptance of the Order of Andros surrender petition, also declining to require concessions of any kind. On the seventh day, they rested. Animal House sent out galaxy-wide invitations to civilian populations for its open bars and parties, to which the later reports of individual acts of perversion were so profound and disgusting that decorum prohibits broadcasting them on public channels. The war lasted for only a short time but it was a hell of a lot of fun. A summary of the war statistics has been presented here. Confirmed by the Galactic Center for Science Education and 14 other independent scientific communities, a general warning has been issued to every star system in the galaxy. What is described as a multi-dimensional planar folding event will be taking place in the near future. While the cause and specific contributing factors are not fully understood, speculation has focused on a purely natural phenomenon. Fortunately, as the effects of this folding event will be catastrophic, the GCSC has a solution for able-bodied governors, though it will require sacrifice. By interstellar mandate to all human population centers, governors are required to withdraw their forces to their home star system and set up the required defensive fields. The technical specifications of these defenses are located in the download file attached to this broadcast. This defensive maneuver will not require much time to implement, and will only be usable during the multidimensional planar folding event itself, which is not expected to take place for another week or two, at minimum. The fallout of this event is not completely known at present, but it appears that the dimensional walls separating a few alternate timelines are on the verge of collapse. The realignment process will be almost instantaneous for all dimensions affected, yielding the same net result. The control of all systems beyond the home star system's defense shielding will be lost, but this seems to be related mostly to the artificial and dimensional specific constructs. Human life will persist. Expectations are that there will be a doubling if not tripling effect on the number of active governed systems in the galaxy. This will present serious questions as to territory and resources. Governors are urged to stockpile their resources and assets now in preparation for the inevitable multidimensional planar folding event. Stay tuned for further details in the upcoming weeks. For the Disavowed Alliance, Tismat took over for Governor Andros. In the Cygnus Alliance, Bernhard relinquished his command and allowed Darth Turbs to lead. The entity, replacing Darkling, Jack Killer is now commanding the Alliance. Broadcast from any recruitment station in your area, several alliances are still looking for able pilots and governors to join their ranks. The Night Angels Alliance, commanded by Governor Lodon, is looking for a new talent. Headed by Governor Sonicus, the Black Dragons have opened their recruitment stations. The Apex Predators, led by Governor Azaline, stand ready to assist governors looking for a home. Under the direction of Jack Killer, the Antony is currently looking for talented governors who have demonstrated their control over at least one more system beyond their home star. Posted by Governor Boba Fett, the Order of Andros has positions open for active governors. Cygnus Alliance, led by Darth Turbs, has issued recruitment protocols. Disavowed Alliance, headed by Governor Tismet, is accepting active governors. LNGN Special Public Service Announcement A call for civility has gone out over all public broadcast channels by community and official entities across the galaxy. While it is understandable that certain things may draw out strong emotional responses, a reminder to keep public channels reasonably civil has been issued. This has been your Galactic News Broadcast. Good hunting.